Okay, so we're here with Jonathan from GPU Ooh, Audio. What's up? <laughs> How's it going, man? It's going awesome, yeah, how are you? Yeah, good, good. Yeah, That's what, great. Uh, what have you got to show us today? What's going yeah, on? Yeah, so, so my name is Jonathan. Um, I'm the co-founder of GPU Audio, and GPU Audio is the world's first um, startup company and tech company to focus exclusively on bringing uh, DSP to GPUs. So what we do is we use the power of graphics cards and thousands of processing cores to do parallel audio processing, and uh, we offload it from your CPU to your GPU, return it to the CPU. Uh, for VST3s, it's within one millisecond latency. Um, without VST3s, like if you're un unrestrained and you're just building custom software, we have it down to basically real-time audio, 150 microseconds or less. And uh, yeah, basically we're, we're on a mission to create a real-time future for audio processing for everything from plugins to cloud-based DSP, collaboration, um, all of that kind of stuff using the power of GPUs that are already in your computer or you can obviously scale it up, build servers, all that kind of stuff. So it's, it's really just leveraging the power that has already existed, that's been basically ignored for the last 10, 15 years. And um, yeah, we're really excited to be able to you know, show it to people here at NAMM. So. Awesome. And what, what are the benefits then of using the GPU processing over sort of CPU processing? Like, what's the difference? Right. So, um, well, first of all, you know, CPU based processing, as pretty much everybody probably knows, is it's a sequential process. You know what I mean? Meaning we're processing very large bits of data um, very quickly, you know, on really high, um, um, you know, like super fast clock speeds. But if we're able to, you know, the concept was what if we were able to break up that data into tiny little bits? spread it out across thousands of cores on GPUs, and then return it to the CPU, then we're not obligated to process all of it you know, at the same time running through the same bottleneck, right? So think of it as like a narrow bottleneck, lots of data, eventually you're gonna, it's gonna slow down. That's why when you're running uh, plugins or running software and you're using a really DSP heavy piece of software, um, you know, oftentimes you're, you'll see your CPU usage you know, creep up 70%, 80%, especially with big uh, projects like convolution reverbs and things like that, or multi-channel audio, spatial audio. And eventually you have to go out and you have to buy a bunch of hardware to scale up that DSP, right, so that you have more power and you have more processing um, ability for your computer. But when we do it on the GPU, what we're able to do is we're able to scale it. So, you know, we might just use a handful of cores you know, for processing threads, and then as you add more DSP plugins or as you uh, take up more DSP on your computer, it scales across all the rest of the cores that are there. So we've designed a really smart sort of, um, you know, underlying infrastructure to make that happen so that the more plugins that you add or the more software uh, power that you require, you're not actually adding to the latency of your processing. So you're not going to run into the same issues, you know, of it, you know audio bugging out, failing audio dropouts, typical things like that. But even more than that, um, you know, more than just solving like existing issues, you know, with plug-in load, um, it gives people the ability to actually build new products that um, have features that were maybe never before possible. So for instance, um, you know, if you wanted to do a multi-zone, multi-convolution reverb, you know, we can do that with ease. If you wanted to, um, you know, run collaboration software with, you know, hundreds of users, uh, having access to the same assets, you can build software like that on this platform. So, um, at, at a fundamental level, that that GPU processing, you know, expands the abilities that people have to produce new, new software with new features. Awesome. Um, Is there anything that people can try now? Is there anything available for people to try if they do have a GPU? Yeah, absolutely. And, and actually, one thing I was going to mention too is that um, if you're just looking for like a raw number, you know, typical performance increase, 40x to 100x times what you would get on like a normal CPU based DSP solution. So, so we're talking, you know, like orders of magnitude more power with graphics cards that are, again, you know, like, like this laptop right here, maybe like a $900 laptop or like $1,200 laptop. It's built in, it has more power than like a $4,000 interface with DSP chips. And these chips can be implemented into interfaces. So if people want to build interfaces with that, they can do it. But yeah, so, so the way the GPU audio has started is, you know, we had to start somewhere. We want to show people what's going on with the tech. The best way we can do that is just start by building plugins. So, um, so we've actually started building a plugin suite. It comes out the end of June. Um, we're just calling it our open beta suite. It's all going to be free. Um, it's going to be you know, 10 or 12 different audio plugins with really high DSP. Um, we already released the early access, which has been in production for a couple of months now. And um, with our early access, it's a free plugin. It's a convolution uh, reverb plugin. This particular model is going to be uh, powered by NVIDIA GPUs. Um, our ecosystem is growing. In, in about one week, we're going to add AMD GPU support to that. 
again, the full beta suite comes out soon, and then we have all this other cool stuff like Mac OS support, and then um, obviously sort of a, a semi-secret project you know, that you see right there. Um, the early access plugin is, is a convolution reverb that uses the GPU. So the idea for this early access was we want people to test it out, tell us how it's working for them, submit bug reports, and then we're going to work with the community to build that. So about 6,000 people have downloaded it so far in the first month and a half. Um, we have about almost 1,000 people in the Discord server right now. So that's where we you know, post all the downloads and everything. But um, yeah, I can, I can show you the early access if you want. Sure, yeah. OK. And uh, what formats is it available in? Uh, like, who, who can actually download this? Right, so for right now, we, we started with the VST3 standard. Um, VST3 you know, standard or the container has some limitations to it. Um, you know, so uh, we want to expand beyond that. We're adding audio units you know, within a few weeks or maybe like the next month. And then um, we're hoping to add AAX and other formats like that as requested. Um, but for right, for right now in early access, we're focused on Windows and NVIDIA cards. Uh, but like I said, in about a week, the AMD support will be there. And all of those updates are free. And we're you know, co constantly going to be adding to the early access, even when beta comes out. So we have early access moving. And then we have beta that's going to come out with a whole bunch of free stuff. So um, yeah, let me, let me show you kind of what's going on. So I've loaded up in Reaper here. Um, we've got a sample from a friend of mine. He's a great saxophone player in the Los Angeles region. And uh, if I go to FX, you can see we got, it's very tiny on this 4K screen, but here's our FIR convolver. So this comes with uh, 10 you know, impulse responses preloaded. It's just a very simple single, single mix knob uh, plugin. Uh, but the goal of it is, is again, showing that you, know, you can run plugins on your GPU. And if you're running Task Manager, you can see how it scales up as it goes, although we're not going to do that right now. So what I can do here is, um, you know, to kind of prove the point about not adding latency with more um, instances, let's, let's kind of start by just listening to one instance of this reverb. And let's do like, uh, yeah, I think, I think Convolution 3 sounds pretty nice. Oops, my level's a little low. Going to scale through a couple of these different mixes. Let's go 100%. So the, there's a selection of different uh, IRs on, on the plugin, I take it. Yeah, so these are the stock ones uh, that the guys uh, back in our, our team on, uh, in Eastern Europe have implemented. We've also implemented um, two other, so far, two other impulse response packs that are basically free impulse responses. Uh, most of them are binaural impulse responses because I'm a special audio nut. So I like the idea of reverb feeling like it has an immersive quality to it, even if you're working in stereo. So that's why we decided to, to release those ones in particular. Sounds really nice. Thank you. So yeah, that's, that's what the algorithm sounds like. Um, so let's kind of do a little something here. Let's pause it real quick. And I'm just going to duplicate the track. And the reason I want to do this is I just want to show you, you know, purely running it on GPU, I can run a whole bunch of instances without adding any latency to the session. And then you still have your CPU to, to run other plugins that are CPU based. So let's do a little uh, duplication here. I'm gonna have to do this manually. So let's do like, you know, let's just start with maybe eight, right? Eight stereo tracks. I've, in the past I've had issues with even running that many, you know, on like an older MacBook in the past. Although, let's see. I'm going to drop the level just so that it doesn't clip out and mute. So you can see, play button, boom, we're in. Sounding nice. Obviously, it's the same convolution on every track, you know, so this is not an artistic endeavor. This is more of a performance endeavor here. Yeah. Um, but let's, let's go ahead and maybe double that up. Let's get 16 and see what's going on. I think the GPU on this laptop has about eight gigabytes of memory. I could be wrong about that. So let's try 16 and see what that sounds like. Yeah, that's nice. Still working. Yeah. And as you can see, uh, just in case anyone's skeptical here, they are enabled. <laughs> everything's, everything's perfectly enabled. And is there like a minimum spec GPU that people can expect to use with this? Yeah, typically what we do is we, um, we recommend 
We, we have been surprised. We, we actually support some GPUs that we didn't think we supported. You know what I mean? They actually ended up working once we released a few bug fixes, uh, thanks to the Discord community. Um, but we do recommend, you know, uh, a 1080 or, uh, you know, one of the, the 10 series, uh, like, you know, the 1080, 1070, 1060 from NVIDIA and up. So pretty much any modern gaming GPU will work, although the 900 series did work. Um, with the AMD stuff, uh, that, that update will come, you know, in just a few days, and you'll be able to see how much, um, you know, how many different GPUs are supported there. So, so we'll get there. Um, and so for, um, so beta suite's coming out uh, in the summer, summertime? Yes, so the beta suite is currently slated for the end of June, and there's a huge list of all the plugins that are coming out. So there's, um, you know, we have like guitar style effects, phasers, flangers, choruses, reverbs, delays. Um, one of the most exciting plugins that I'm, I'm really interested in is called Fireverb, and it's kind of like a creative, multi-convolution, uh, you know, sound design crafting reverb. So it's like an expanded version of, you know, what we did with the FIR Convolver, except, you know, just blown out for, for creative sound design. And that's, that's my field, you know, that's what I love to do, is create those kind of things. Yeah, it, seem, it seems like the scope to do um, sort of audio plugins beyond the conventional with this now. Like if we have, if there's, there's so much power there that um, we can kind of, go out of the box with this this sort of thing, do you think? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, again, that's one of the, the cool things because if anybody knows anything about GPUs, um, you know, they excel at machine learning, you know, AI, you know, driven technologies. I mean, the world is basically going to be run by AI pretty soon. You know, if you happen to catch the latest NVIDIA uh, GTC, the GPU technical conference or whatever it's called, um, you know, the keynote that Jensen gave there was, you know, that NVIDIA in particular has com increased computing power in the world by one million X, you know, over the last 10 years. Yeah. So, so for us, the impetus was, okay, you know, the music industry is kind of in its own little world, um, but then we want to, you know, if, if the music industry wants to grow and evolve and be able to kind of keep up with where technology is going and where the demand of content, where platforms are going, then it's important to implement a new standard, right? So that's why we went with GPUs, because it was like, well, if everything else is being run on GPUs, you know, cloud-based servers and things like that, wouldn't it be cool if the audio standard that we were using to build audio tools was rooted in the same world? So what that means is that, you know, the future of plugins, the future of music software could all be run in the cloud on these servers in real time, right? Because they, um, they offer so much power and flexibility, and again, with machine learning, AI, um, the, the, you know, there's, there's far fewer limitations there than there are in CPU. So we, we have a number of companies working with us on the spatial audio front, um, other companies that are working on the, um, the AI machine learning front. There's a lot of really, really cool stuff happening. Yeah, you know? yeah Jonathan, what's, what's the roadmap for GPU audio? Like, what, what's it looking like in terms of formats and release dates? What, are you, what have you guys got planned? Yeah, well, I could, I could show you right here. So let's, let's take a look at the website. So um, right now, this tab on our website, website's gpu.audio, by the way. And if you just click the early access tab, then you're gonna see you know, basically what the plan is. So right now, uh, for Try It Now, we have the early access program. The early access program is really designed for people who want to test out the tech, you know, see if it's working on their computer, provide feedback. It's really a community of, of, of like super early access users, you know, that are interested in where this is going, like the whole story of the company. Um, that's going to be updated really soon. Um, right now, it only supports NVIDIA cards and Windows but we're supporting AMD cards by the end of next week. So by the time people are watching this video, you know, who knows, maybe it'll be available already. Um, so let me, let me kind of show you the roadmap here. So AMD GPU support is coming. The full beta suite, it says mid 2022. What we mean by that is the end of June. Um, so at the end of June, there is a whole suite of these plugins coming out, like I mentioned before. Um, and or you know before we started the interview, and all of these uh, these plugins are geared towards you know full full scale music production and creative work. So um, all of these plugins are going to be available for free download. They're going to come in stages. So we'll release like a modulation suite and a compression suite, you know, like a distortion and effects suite and that type of thing. So those will all be part of uh, open beta. Um, this project right here, we'll, we'll tell you more about that when we decide to to announce it officially. Um, but when it comes to Mac OS support, this is probably the most popular question we get. You know, when are you going to support, uh, you know, Apple Silicon and the M1 GPUs, right, or the GPUs in the M1 system? Um, we actually started a technical uh, conversation with them now, so now we're working with Apple to make that happen. So, you know, you could expect it by 2023 at the latest. Um, but in early access, we actually have some surprises coming up in the next few months where people will be able to basically start testing the support earlier. 
Um, the one thing that's not on the, on the roadmap on the website is audio unit support. Mm -hmm. So audio unit plugin um, format will also be supported within the next couple of months. So we're moving really fast. And um, yeah, we're excited about all those products. And we have third party plugins that are gonna be released as well. Um, the third party plugins are coming from some really exciting companies. One of them is called Mach 1. They make spatial audio mixing software, so there's going to officially be a GPU-powered spatial audio mixing platform, which I'm really, really excited about. Um, you can find more out about that pretty soon. Uh, there's going to be an official press release you know, within a few weeks. Um, another company that's using GPU audio is a company called Skava, and they actually designed the spatial audio, again, like virtual acoustics for the Slate digital VSX headphone, and they are building their own secret software that's going to be powered by GPU. Hint, hint, they're a spatial audio company, so it's gonna be something really cool. Um, so as, as you can see, it's like, you know, very progressive-minded, you know, companies that wanna build the future of audio are choosing to use this solution uh, to build alongside us. So, yeah, awesome. lots, lots more to announce as we go. And just finally, for like software developers as well, mm -hmm. for like other developers, is it gonna be, is this gonna be GPU audio only sort of software that you're releasing? How's that gonna work? Yeah, so um, the way it works is we're not we're not trying to build a walled walled garden, you know, as as it were. So the GPU audio standard could be licensed and used by anybody. Um, it could be free for a lot of people. For bigger corporations, obviously, there would be some sort of fee or something involved. Uh, we're still working out the exact details, but we have an SDK that's going to be released around the time of the beta. So when the beta comes out, you'll also see sort of in parallel. No, no pun intended. Um, the SDK get released, and an SDK is a software developer's kit. So that's where other plugin companies and other um, you know developers are going to be able to use the GPU audio engine to develop new software. You know whether they want to do it for live events, you know build it into a console or build plugins on their own. So yeah, it's going to be available to everybody to use, and that's that's probably the most exciting part. You know is to build this new ecosystem. Um, one, one thing I can say is we're working directly with Nvidia and with AMD and um, a bunch of other companies, you know, that I, some of them I can't mention, but yeah, we're getting like the best, the world's best technical support and, uh, you know, direct partnerships with the people who make the hardware that you guys are gonna be using for this, this software. Excellent, so, yeah. very exciting times. Thank you. Yeah. Cool, cheers for speaking to us today, Jonathan. Yeah, you too, man. I'm a big fan of Sonic State, so uh, I'll, I'll be all over your YouTube channel in the comments checking things out, so thanks for covering the show and um, yeah, looking forward to seeing you guys. Nice one. All right, catch you later.